Okay, uh, good morning once again. Thanks for joining in. Uh, good to see you all. Um, uh, let's get started. So in the last uh, classes, uh, last sessions, we uh, ended with chapter two, talking about uh, the brief history through time and how music and uh, has evolved through time, especially in the context of worship ministry. Uh, it was a wonderful journey, uh, and I'm sure it will continue to evolve, right? Um, so the music that was in the 60s or the 50s is not the same as uh, music these days. So every decade, the sound has changed, um, and there's been a different move. And, um, and so the church has also adapted over time. Uh, not easily, there has been a little uh, resistance uh but then you know eventually um you know they give in and um the sound in the context of worship is also very different so uh yeah that's what we studied in the last class the last chapter but uh so today we'll uh, uh from this chapter on it's going to get a little bit more uh practical uh, and more insight into worship ministry uh, in itself okay um so yeah i hope you enjoy this is the chapter three is an introduction to uh, worship ministry okay um it worship ministry or leading a worship ministry is very different from leading worship Okay, uh, there are a lot of challenges that are involved in leading a, a leading a worship ministry, um, and and the list can go on and on, right? Um, so, it's it can seem like a very uh, thank uh, thankless uh, part of the ministry, uh, but if you had, if you were thinking that worship ministry or leading a worship ministry is only about leading worship, uh, oh boy, you are so wrong. <laughs> Okay, uh, so and, and that's what we're going to take a lot of insight into it, uh, you know, because worship ministry in general, worship ministry, in my opinion, uh, get is the only ministry of a church that gets the highest number of feedback or suggestions, um, and from at least from my experience. Okay, for example, uh, why do you guys only do fast songs or start with fast songs? Why can't you all start with slow songs? Why do you all only do new songs? Why don't you do old songs? Classics. Why do you only do classics? And why don't you do any new songs? Uh, why do you don't? Why do you not do any songs from the '90s these days, and only from Bethel and Elevation? Uh, why don't? You, why do you only do songs from the '90s and not do the latest songs? Uh, you get you get the picture, isn't it? Uh, you know, so worship ministry uh, is the only ministry of a church that gets the highest number of feedback uh, and suggestions and uh, and yeah, a lot of things. Okay, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I mean, just a real uh, example, a real life example from uh, my experience is that um, one Sunday I started off a set by uh, you know by uh, with this uh, classic song called uh, As the Deer Pants for the Waters. We all know that song, right? Uh, and so I started off the worship set by start, uh, starting that song just to get you know everybody in into the groove, warmed up. And uh, and so on that same day after the service towards the end, we all come out and uh, I received two kinds of feedbacks. One was a very positive one. Someone came and said to me, uh, you know, it was wonderful that you started with a classic, uh, you know, vintage. Uh, it was wonderful. I uh, love that song, As the Deer Pants for the Waters and all that. And the same day after this person, another person comes and says, like, why do you, do you start with so slow songs? You should start with something jumpy songs. You know? <laughs> so, uh, worship ministry is not about pleasing people. If you're in it to please people, uh, you will be so discouraged, so disappointed very, very fast. You will be exhausted. You will burn out in one week. OK, uh, so w there are a lot of challenges uh, in leading a worship ministry. Uh, OK, so it's very different from leading worship. 
Okay, we have to get that very clear. Leading a worship ministry is very different from leading worship. Leading worship is part of the worship ministry, but in and itself is not worship ministry. Okay, um, so and we need to. Uh, so we need all the help we can get in terms of. Uh, you know, leading the worship ministry, reducing our stress levels so that we can sleep well, uh, you know, refining our systems, uh, uh, you know, so that the musicians, the techs, and everybody else in the team also feel valued and cared for. Okay, we need a lot of help in leading worship ministry. Uh, and, and, um, and so that's what we're going to learn today, okay, um, in this chapter at least. This is an introduction to worship ministry. Okay, so and and there are four relationships that make us make or break us in ministry in general, but in our, in in our context, the worship ministry. Okay, um, at least this is from uh, my experience that these four areas of worship uh, ministry leadership uh, will kind of set the principles, will kind of set uh, will set the tone, like the foundation. Uh, that we need to lead people and to lead this ministry in general okay and so these four relationships will um, will 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 requires your uh, attention uh, you know it, it demands your attention and so you need to give it to it okay and the first relationship that will make or break is your relationship with God okay uh, like I mentioned, these four points, are, are, these are not the only four areas, uh, but, you know, the list can grow. But uh, for now, I've only put these four together because I felt that these four pillars of basic foundations are very important. Um, and as I've mentioned, that uh, these are uh, relevant to any area of ministry, ministry in general, but more so. Uh, but more so in our context, worship ministry, okay? Um, so our relationship with God. Um, your, your walk with the Lord is what's going to keep the fuel burning. Okay, it's your secret time with Him, your prayer life, uh, your, your life of worship, your spiritual life, your emotional well-being, all of it. Um, is 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 connected to your relationship with God how you lead people how you lead your ministry everything um, because um, you know there are highs and there will be lows in in the worship ministry in right and uh, like for example Elijah uh, he, his high was cutting off 400 uh, you know uh, heads of Baal worshippers and then he immediately, uh, you know, goes into this mode of depression. Uh, Lord, why am I alive? What am I doing? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. And uh, there will be phases or seasons in life where you will, f where we will feel like that. You know, there will be a moment of high. It's like everything is going great. The ministry is awesome. Uh, you know, we did this, we did that, etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Uh, but um, but there will also be a low. And we need God in both the seasons of our lives. We need we need Him when we are on the high, and we need Him when we are on the low. It's not to say we need Him especially when we are high, and we need Him especially when we are low. We need God all the time. In our successes, in our failures, in our good times, in our bad times. Um, and so it is your relationship uh, with the Lord uh, will give you the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding on how to handle situation circumstances, how to handle fame and success, and how to handle uh, failures as well. Okay, so if your relationship with God is not sorted, as fundamental and basic as it may sound, uh, it, it's that relationship that's going to make or break you. Okay, it is when uh, it is the Lord who gives us the vision for ministry, a burden for the ministry. And so most of the time, uh, and again, I've learned this from my own experience, that I used to associate burnouts, right? Uh, when you keep doing a lot of things, you're busy, you know, you experience burnout. But uh, I've learned that 
burnouts are not really associated with doing to a lot of things. It is in doing a lot of things, we lose vision. And because of the lack of vision, of direction, and uh, you know, we feel lost. And so it is our relationship with the Lord, our walk with the Lord uh, is going to keep us intact. Uh, you know, like a well oil engine, you know, keeps he poured in the oil and lamp, right? Um, so our relationship with God. And secondly, uh, our relationship with our family. Um, in the notes, you would see it's mentioned that our first church to which we must attend is our family. Uh, being a good husband, wife, son, daughter, father, mother, or even friend is central to being a good worship leader and overseer of a worship ministry. Okay, um, so our first church to which we must attend or give our attention to or tend to, tend to the flocks as we say, right? The first church that we need to tend to is our family. Uh, you know, I like the Romans chapter 12, verse 1, which is the in, in the message version. Um, hold on a second, let me see if I can find it. Uh, we've read this before. Um, but just very quickly, I'll put it for us over here. If I can find it. Are you guys uh, learning something, getting something from today's session so far? Understanding, following? Yeah, so uh, this is what it says, Romans 12, verse 1 and 2, partial 2 in the message version. It says, so here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for Him. Okay, uh, and so you see how the first point and the second point is integral, right? It's kind of interconnected. And so the second relationship that will make or break you is your relationship with the family. If we give too much of attention to ministry, uh, which we, uh, which is tend to happen, uh, you know, in the name of doing God's work, God's work, God's work, God's work, ministry, 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 and there, and there's hardly any attention given to the people at home, your children, your family, uh, you know. They, you, you, you are treated like a paying guest. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, Roshan only lives here. He comes here to eat and sleep, and then he's gone. You don't know where he is, what he's doing. Uh, but he's doing ministry. <laughs> you know, so um, let it not be the case. Okay? So our relationship with our family is essential um, for us to be in a successful ministry long term. All right, and the, our third relationship is our relationship with our pastor. Okay, and I cannot stress enough on the importance of it. Right, uh, so one of the most vital relationships in a local church is often one of the most neglected, the relationship between the worship leader and the pastor of the church. Um, and so, Sometimes what will happen is that the worship pastor will have his own vision and uh, but and forget that he is under the supervision of the senior pastor and then that causes friction, right? Um, that causes uh, exchange of unpleasantries, so to say. Uh, but we, we got to keep in mind, isn't it, that it, we are under the supervision of our senior pastor. Uh, you know, like we, the lesson we learned from the David's worship team in First Chronicles chapter 25, we see time and time again, Haman, uh, Heman and his son, Asaph and his sons, Jerithan and his sons, they were all under the supervision of the king. 
that word says, right? If when you, again, I'm just refreshing, reminding us from First Chronicles chapter 25, if you've forgotten, uh, verse 6 especially. They were all under the supervision of the king. Uh, and so uh, our surrender, our submission uh, with, uh, with our pastor is directly linked with our relationship with him how do we understand his vision well and know and learn that we are not in competition with him uh he, he he's a senior pastor he has a vision from the lord for the church for the land uh you know for the people that he is leading at the end of the day he is accountable to god for his actions and uh, and for everything that he decides on he is accountable our responsibility uh, is to serve him, serve the vision of the church well. Okay, um, and so there are three vital points, uh, you know, that make sure that, uh, that uh, a healthy relationship with our senior pastor, between the worship pastor and the senior pastor. The first thing is uh, respect. Okay, worship pastor needs to respect by submitting to his authority accepting the direction and the decisions of the pastor okay accepting that okay this is where the pastor uh, you know this is his vision for the church for the city for the nation uh, and i'm going to accept that direction and and i will do my best to serve him accomplish that vision Okay, and vice versa. And the pastor should show respect to the worship pastor by constant, by not constantly interrupting and preempting the worship pastor's methods without consideration. Okay, so some, not all of you might be worship pastors. Some of you might end up being senior pastors as well of a church. And so if there's a worship pastor under your leadership, uh, under your uh, supervision, it's very important that you don't micromanage. You trust the one of the reasons why you've hired that person as a worship pastor is because you believe that person has the uh, the abilities and the capabilities the skill set that is necessary to lead the worship ministry and so as a senior pastor in this scenario let's just say i'm a senior pastor uh you know if i've hired abinas uh as my worship pastor i've we, I, I will give him a gist okay this is my vision this is where we what we want to do this is the goal for this year let's work towards it uh, and and i'm going to trust him with the with the responsibilities that has been assigned to him uh, and so you know they're not constantly interrupting it's like and say it's like keep giving suggestions why are you doing like this try to do this do that do that do this do that um so it's very important to give that space uh and that space to even fail so the person under you is not constantly thinking that if I fail I'm going to get fired are you with me right I hope you're understanding what I'm saying um, so the worship pastor needs to respect the vision of the senior pastor for the church and then the senior pastor now also have to understand um, and you know take the hands uh, of the wheel and trust his worship pastor that he has hired he or she has hired okay um and there will be times where you will disagree with each other a worship pastor will might disagree with the senior pastor's methods his ways his ideas and vice versa but uh as i've said before that you can disagree with a person and still respect them right a disagreeing does not necessarily mean disrespect so you can disagree respectfully okay so respect is one of those components that's going to keep a, a healthy check on your relationship with your senior senior pastor and vice versa okay um, and the second part is consideration what is that so when the worship when the pastor and the worship pastor have different ideas about the direction the service should take each must have consideration for the other the worship leader should be considerate of the pastor respecting his expertise and experience the pastor may allow the worship leader to make mistakes due to lack of experience and correct him or her gently after the service instead of publicly during the worship time 
the role of the pastor is to build up. Okay, so we are uh, considerate to one another. Uh, you know, have you used this word uh, in a daily life saying people these days are so inconsiderate? You know, how can they be so inconsiderate? Uh, oh, he is a very inconsiderate person, he or she. What does that mean? Is that they, in consideration, inconsiderate simply means that one individual has no regard for the well being of the other person. It's as simple as that. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Okay. A life uh, example. I'm not. Um, so I live in an apartment, okay, right? And this is parking space. I'm saying this because I used this word inconsiderate recently. Um, I can't believe I'm using that as an example right now, but okay, here we go. So I live in an apartment. Uh, you know, there are parking spaces for every apartment. Uh, you know, every house has their own space and um, space for the cars and for the bikes. Um, there is no allotted uh, parking space for the bikes. So when there is no allotment, when there is no proper direction, what happens? Full chaos, right? Everybody will park their bikes however they want, wherever they want, without being considerate about the person who's parked, you know, um, other vehicles. And so, you know, they can see that if they park their bikes there, they, you know, the other person will not be able to take their bike out, which is, you know, a little insight. But eh, who cares? I'm going to park it anyways, because what I want to do is more important. What is that that I won't have? I have I found a space to keep my bike, so I'm going to keep it and I'm going to move on in life. <laughs> so uh, that's just a very poor choice of example there as uh, for that word in consideration. But I hope you get the idea, right? I hope you get the picture. Uh, being considerate to one another. Okay, so you listen to the word of a senior pastor of, of his plans. You're considerate about him. Uh, and you know, and then you take time. Um, and, and the senior pastor also takes time to be considerate about the worship pastor's ideas, his ways, his plans for the worship ministry. Um, not keep interrupting or suggesting constantly, uh, you know, do this, do that, do this, do that, do this, do that, do that, do that. Do that. Uh, it will, it's like, um, you know, freedom with a leash. You know, you say, oh, yeah, you have absolute freedom, but uh, I'm going to put you on the leash and everything, you know. So, um, yeah, consideration, respect and consideration and communication, constant communication. So, um, there's, I mentioned this, there is no such thing as too much communication or over communication. Uh, a constant communication that you can have with your senior pastor uh, is a must. Right. Uh, regardless of um, uh, if he's busy or not, because most of the time, senior pastor will be busy, involved with uh, you know so many uh, aspects of ministry. But it is our responsibility uh, as a worship pastor that I constantly, you know, give keep him updated of what's happening, where we are, uh, how many people are in the team, uh, what are we doing this month, what's happening next month, um, all of the basic uh, communication. So, uh, you know, and that is very important. And so, what happens is that that uh, it creates accountability, a culture of accountability in yourself, and um, and the. And senior pastor will know that okay, this person is accountable, is constantly keeping me updated on what's happening, and he will trust. So the trust will only grow, right? Okay. So uh, that's the third point, the third relationship that our relationship with our pastor is uh, very important, and that can make or break uh, the ministry that you are leading. Respect, consideration, and communication. Okay, and uh, the fourth relationship is the relationship with you and the people that you are leading, right? With your extended team members. Okay, and so Hebrews three thirteen uh, 
we are told to encourage, uh, you know, as long as it's called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. Um, we're called to encourage one another, and uh, encouragement can be like an oxygen uh, to you know, to the person that that's going through a rough day or a rough season in life, right? Um, and so what are you going to be doing uh, about having a healthy relationship with the people that you are leading? Okay, um, because leading a team is hard, as I mentioned, right? And, um, and you need a team to lead the worship ministry eventually. You can't do it all by yourself. And when you have a team, that means there are people involved in a team. And uh, but there are, there is a possibility uh, that there will be criticism, backbiting, uh, you know, unspoken competition, uh, and all of that. But it is our responsibility as leaders, as worship pastors, etc., is to make sure that we teach on encouraging one another. We teach on uh, on kingdom values and kingdom principles. Uh, we we build them up as we just learned in Ephesians 4 is that it is our responsibility to build our team members to and to pray for them to encourage them and to teach them not to be easily offended uh, you know and um, and you take time to sit with them to learn uh, to to see how they are doing in life you walk with them you make time to get to know the people that you are leading, how they are doing in life, uh, spiritually, how is their family doing, and all of those things are very essential, um, you know, in, in leading a worship ministry. Okay, so for, for simple relationship that can make or break us is what? Uh, our relationship with God, our relationship with our family, our relationship with our pastors, a pastor, and our relationship with our extended team members. Okay, uh, any questions or any thoughts, any doubts so far? Anything that you want to share? Um, Pastor, what are the few challenges that you face when it comes to the relationship with the extended members of the team? Because I think everyone will be different and it's not always so easy to get in touch with everyone, right? Yeah, so getting in touch is not the problem. You can get in touch with them. Um, yeah, but as you mentioned, you know, the challenges keep changing. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, we find creative ways to come up with different challenges to make our lives difficult. <laughs> Uh, so some some of the you know uh, recurring challenges can be um, when when a team member is not in sync with the entire team, right? For example, they have not understood the culture of the team, so that's very essential. Um, sorry, guys, my phone I forgot to put it on silent. Yeah. Um, just imagine that a one a team member is out of sync um, with their from the rest of the team. That means they have not understood the culture and what, and that will affect the entire dynamic of the team that functions functions in. Um, okay, and like I said, Jafina, um, the challenges will vary. It will look very different, um, and so some of the challenges that I've faced uh, can be very different from the challenges that you will face. In a ministry, but then uh, the basis of it is uh, people. Anywhere, anytime people are involved, there are going to be challenges. Uh, one of it, and and the basic part of it is um, being teachable. For example, do they know how to receive feedback, uh, or, or do you know how to give feedback? This these two things will uh, are essential. It's, it's like the fundamental foundation of it. Uh, as a leader, as a worship pastor, I need to know how to give a feedback um, that my decision is not biased. It's uh, you know regarding what are the challenges or towards an individual, and 
and is that person with you know that you are leading able to take um, that feedback in a very po in a positive way and so that can go either ways you know and so what has happened in my experience is that you give a feedback uh, it has not been received well they will quit the team the other person will receive the feedback well and you see them grow exponentially uh, you know in their walk with God so being able yeah that I think that's one of the main challenges in ministry is that learning to give feedback one and then learning to receive feedback is a uh, huge I would say okay. all right uh, anybody else anything else that you want to share or ask from what we've covered John, do you want to share any of the challenges uh, from your own experience, very momentarily, briefly, if you want to? No compulsion. My challenge would be to get the right people. Um, uh, but still praying and looking uh, for that. And um, so, honestly, what has happened is um, to lead worship without a break almost a year and a half is <laughs> yeah. yeah just that is something and in between like one or two Sundays yeah now including last Sunday three Sundays of God mm -hmm. so that was one challenge and that is still a challenge mm -hmm. praying and asking God for more people uh, to volunteer yes it's awesome yeah thanks uh, JP thanks for sharing yeah it's been uh, quite challenging for John in Mangalore um, so anybody called to go to Mangalore Please get in touch with Pastor John. Yeah. Um, uh, any, any other challenges? Anything else that you want to ask uh, people? Please ask. Um, you know, from what we've shared with the relationships uh, that we've spoken about. Uh, I'll just add one more thing. So there was one instance where um, I had a really uh, bring feedback as we were just sharing. Uh, this was regarding the conduct of a person, character and conduct of a person in the team, which disrupted uh, so many things within the team and even within the church. Right. And good thing is that when uh, prayer, when we prayerfully took the decision to uh, take the person out of the team, uh, it was challenging for us. But after that, we saw a great, um, great growth in the church, even in numbers. Hmm. So I don't know if that is uh, spiritually connected, but that is what we saw. So, so it's, the similar instance had happened twice. Like right. when two people were taken out of the team, there was a high, uh, uh, you know, high, high amount of change in the growth of the church. Right, right. Uh, yeah, so I thought I'd just share that also. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Okay, uh, everybody else good? Um, Zelatoli, Rosalind, any thoughts, any questions? Okay. All right. Um, if there are no questions, we can continue. Um, all right. So uh, the goals of a worship ministry, um, it can be simple, which is nurturing, creating, and establishing. Okay, nurturing. We are we are called to nurture. We are pastors uh, and uh, shepherds, isn't it? So we are to nurture people that we are leading in the congregation, etc. Nurturing an encouraged and joyful worship ministry community, uh, creating effective, consistent, and beautiful and uh, worship environments, establishing longevity in uh, your volunteer force for musician tech and leaders um, so there is the practical and the spiritual involved uh, it, it, it's it, it's practical and, and spiritual is involved in every area of ministry that you're leading uh, and so it's nothing different here um, so but just that the goals are a little different so you continue to nurture people that you are leading and the congregation that you are leading 
uh, and you create a, a healthy culture within the team and that as a result of that would lead to beautiful worship mo uh, environments um, you know so it's so this wor the, the time of worship is not just the 30 minutes on the stage and after that uh, you know it, it, life looks very different so the, it's not consistent right the life is not consistent on and off the stage so creating an effective con and a consistent and beautiful worship environment a beautiful culture of worship uh, is very important establishing longevity in your volunteer force of musicians tech and leaders how, uh, how can you help them do what they are doing for a longer time a longer period of time right uh, uh, it is a possibility that if there's only one person to run the media team, that means if it's just, just one person who's doing the presentation Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, uh, there will come a message one day or an email saying that, uh, you know, I haven't taken a break in a year's time. Uh, we need to find someone else to do the PPT this Sunday. So, um, you know, we are constantly thinking about how to build the volunteering team as well and so that we are not overusing the people um, who are who is serving so we are con considerate about the people that we are leaving okay there's just a very small basic uh, goals of the worship ministry uh, but this section uh, the next one is crucial the daily tasks of running a worship ministry the daily tasks of running a worship ministry uh, now there are a lot of things that I have not added to this list which I have added to my personal list recently um, as I've had this question asked many times it's like what do you do uh, you know I, I serve as a worship pastor yeah is it so what exactly do you do uh, only Sundays uh, what other work is there for you besides <laughs> so Sunday um, yeah so let me just take you through some of the things that uh you know that's there in the worship ministry the daily tasks so there are daily tasks weekly tasks some of them are monthly tasks and some of them are quarterly tasks so the way i have uh, separated them is like that daily tasks weekly monthly and quarterly and so they kind of repeat okay so uh, one of the responsibilities of leading a worship ministry is scheduling teams or scheduling bands uh, or what we call it as rostering the team. Uh, okay, so who is doing what uh, every Sunday? Okay, so uh, let me see if I can um, get an example of what I want to show. It's just an example okay um, so I'm currently working on the roster for the month of October um, I hope you can see this right this is the uh, rostering sheet uh, for worship teams for the month of October which I'm currently working on um, and so uh, let me just take you through this so this has different sheets uh, you know the first will have all the details of all the jam rooms and studios that we hire where we meet to practice um, we have sermon plans this has to be updated for October so Sunday what's the topic of the sermons um, pastor will send the pulpit plan accordingly I will make the changes and so this sheet is only worship leaders so as you can see I'm running very thin for October 15th, 22nd, 29th for locations like North, East, and West. Uh, please pray for me. Uh, okay. And uh, so in addition to that, the CC team simply means the children's church team as well. So we have to put the team for that as well. Uh, this is how the rostering sheet uh, looks like. Um, and then we have location wise so at central you know we have who's leading worship who is playing the keys who's playing the acoustic guitar is there an electric guitarist but for this sunday we do not have an electric guitarist so we have to manage without electric guitarist we have a bassy 
uh, who's on drums and backup vo background vocals. Um, yeah, all of this. So once the worship leaders are sorted for every Sunday, the next step is to build the team for each Sunday. Okay, and uh, this is quite a task. Uh, so, okay. Um, now there are a couple of ways in uh, how this has been done with other churches as well. So, um, so what some worship ministries do is they run the team model. Uh, so, for example, what happens is they have a bunch of musicians, uh, let's say six, a team of six or seven, uh, that they will, and the team will not change for the entire month. That's the team model. Okay, uh, so it could be the same band for a month or two. Uh, and then there's another model uh, where, you know, the, the members will keep changing every Sunday. And that's where the, uh, you know, the roster comes into the picture. Uh, and so you can pick a system, a method that works best for your church. Okay. you. Uh, which, which will help the ethos of your community. Okay, so it both has its benefits, um, advantages, disadvantages, pros and cons, uh, but not by a lot. So you pick a, a system that works best for you. And so this is one of the tasks of leading, uh, running a worship ministry, daily tasks of running a worship ministry. And uh, the task of clustering your team members. Uh, so we saw in, in the four areas, four ministries, uh, four relationships that make or build. The last one was your relationship with your extended team members. And one of the areas that how you take care of them is by pastoring them. Um, right. Um, so I think in Ephesians chapter four, somewhere it says uh, endeavor, uh, you know, to keep the unity to keep the peace among one another. So the word endeavor simply means to be proactive, to do something fast, uh, to be the first one to do something positive. Uh, and being proactive will uh, will save us from any in any relationship. That means you're not waiting uh, for the other person to text. The opposite of proactive is reactive. Right? It's okay. Let me wait on this person to do the send the text, and then I will react by sending another message. Okay. Let something fall off the stage. If I know something is about to fall from the stage, I will wait. I will fold my hands and I'll sip. I will wait for it to fall. Then I will, uh, you know, go help. Um, so proactiveness is what. Okay. If you see like a mic is about to fall, or a guitar is about to fall, or the entire stage is about to fall. What you do is you take you you are being proactive about fixing the problem even before the problem takes its final form. And so it's very similar with uh, leading and pastoring the worship members is that you are proactive and you take uh, initiative uh, about being interested in their life. Okay, sending a text message or a happy birthday message or an anniversary message, calling them a random call, so catching with catching up with them for a chai, tea, uh, uh, whatever, just meeting with them over, uh, you know, coffee. It's it's all shows that you are interested in getting to know them, right? Um, so. So take the time to ask the team members, uh, you know, who seem a little lost, who seem to be going through a tough time in life. Uh, so ask them, is there anything you can do to help them? Okay, so you're, what, what you're doing is that you are building a culture of encouragement, right? As pastors, we are shepherds. We take care of them, right? We are called to take care of them. Um, so the goal of your pastoral care is to give your team uh, care to one another as needed. All right. Um, so what? I guess we'll just pause here because see that we are very close to the session. So we'll come back and we'll resume from where we left. Okay. Thank you.